We'll use the REST client library to connect to Stack Exchange API to obtain a JSON response, parse that, and turn it into a data set. You can get the documentation of the Stack Exchange API here and actually compose your query and even run it in the browser. We're going to go ahead and copy the URL for this query here. And now I have the URL to execute that query as a REST request. So I'm going to go to the IDE and go to Tools, REST Debugger. I'm going to paste in the URL here, and you'll notice that the URL, this is this part here is called the base URL, and this is the endpoint to the REST request, to the REST endpoint. And then we have parameters here, order, description, um, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and add those parameters on and remove them from here. So go parameters, add, So I've escaped C++ Builder using escape codes here so that it can be URL encoded. So now we've done all that. So we can hit send request. And we go to the body tab and we see this is the body of the JSON that came back. And we go to the tabular data tab. Now here we notice there's nothing, there's only one row. And the reason is, is because everything's actually in this items object. So we specify the JSON root element here, items, and hit apply. And there we see all of our results. Okay, so really quick, just to point a couple things out. This is HTTPS encoded, so it's got SSL on it. And I also know Stack Exchange automatically compresses everything with gzip. So this has gone out, requested it, and decoded it, and decompressed it. So I can specify the application content type. Uh, we're not doing any authentication here, but the REST debugger supports a number of different authentication types, including OAuth and OAuth 2, and well as proxy settings. So much more powerful than what we're showing right now, but nice example. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, copy components. If you want to get the data set, you make sure you're on the tabular data tab. Otherwise, it doesn't give you the data set. Copy components. And we'll go to the IDE now and we'll make a new project. This will work with all project types, but we're going to go ahead and do a multi device application for C builder. Paste down those components. Real quick, let's walk through these components just so we can see each one, what each one does. The first one here, this is the REST client. The REST client is what has the endpoint here. Okay. So it's what makes the connection to the service. The REST request executes the specific request to the service. Now, if you notice here, the base URL is just that base URL. So the reason we took those uh, parameters off and put it into the parameters is that puts it in the REST request. And so if we come here and look at parameters, we can see the parameters in here. Then the REST request puts all those or the result set, the JSON, into the REST response component. And then if we want to put that in a data in a data set, we use the REST response data set adapter, which pulls it from the REST response and puts it into, in this case, an FD mem table. So now we're going to bind this up and I'm going to use uh, live bindings, bind visually, and I'm just going to attach this to a new control and we'll use a grid. If you're doing this on a mobile device, you may want to consider using uh, a list view instead, for example, or whatever you want to do. Certainly very flexible, whatever option you want to take advantage of. Now, notice there's no data here right now, and there's no columns in the FD mem table. But if we execute the REST request at design time, it tells us the result, the response here. We got 200 OK. And all of a sudden, now we have columns and data displayed to the user. Great for design time, very powerful, a lot you can do. At this point, I could customize columns and stuff like that. But I just want to go ahead and run this and display it to the user. But we need to add. A uh, one line of code, and I'm going to say rest request execute. That's it. Because this was a FireMonkey application, I could run this on any platform Android, iOS, OS 10, or Windows, or Windows 64 bit. We're going to go ahead and just run this on Windows just so you can see it working. So there we go. Really quickly, we've connected to a REST service pulled down a JSON response set over SSL. We've decompressed it, decrypted it, bound it to a user interface control and displayed it to the user.